Oh, hi kids. Good morning. You're here. I was just writing my testimony and finishing last week's challenge to write down what I am thankful for every day. What was your challenge? Did you write down yours? Great. I've just completed mine too. Let's see what we have learned so far this year. We have learned that we need to say the right things because words are so powerful and can give life. We have also learned that we have to say the right things by giving thanks. How can we give thanks? We can give thanks in all circumstances, whether good or bad. Yep, it's not always easy to give thanks when things are not good. But thankfully, when we have Jesus in us, we are able to give thanks with Jesus' help every single time. What will we be learning today, teacher? Ah, yes. Today, we'll be learning that saying the right words will help us to look forward to the great things in our life. Hmm. How do we do that, teacher? There are so many great things that God has for us in the Bible. His word, His promises to us. We can say the right things by always speaking those promises that God has given to us, even when we don't see the great things happen yet. Oh, I know. Just like what happened to me. Oh no, my exam is coming soon. And I've still got so much to study. I heard that this is the hardest exam ever. What if I fail? But wait, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Instead of saying how hard your exams are, why not say the right things by speaking the promises in the Bible? There was a man in the Bible who was given a great promise by God. But a long, long, long time passed and he didn't see the promise happen. But because he kept remembering what God promised him, he was able to look ahead, keep trusting, for the good things God had for him. This is Abram and he lived with his wife Sarai in the land of Haran. Both of them had no children. One day, when Abram was 75 years old, God came to Abram and said to him, Abram, I want you to pack all of your things and leave Haran and go to the land that I show you. Trust me and go where I tell you, God said. God promised Abram a son and from that son, many descendants will bless the whole world. So that's what Abram did. He packed all his belongings, his wife and his nephew, Lot. He walked according to God's guidance to the promised land that God was going to give him. Abram and Sarai went to where God told him to go. He went to the land of Canaan. Twenty-five years went by. Abram and Sarai were old but still had no children. God appeared to Abraham and said, Do not be afraid. I'm your shield and a sun is coming. Look at the sky and count the stars. Someday you will have as many children as there are stars in the sky. God told Abraham that his name was no longer called Abram, but Abraham, which means father of many nations. Sarai's name was also changed to Sarah. Abraham believed and trusted God completely. Time passed and when Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90, they finally received the promise. Sarah gave birth to a son. When their son was born, Sarah was so joyful that she laughed. God had brought me laughter, she said. So they named their son Isaac, which means he laughs. From that moment on, God made sure that their descendants became as numerous as the stars in the sky. Abraham did become a father of many nations. And guess who was one of Abraham's descendants? It was Jesus! All because Abraham followed God and trusted God's promise. Abraham trusted God and he held tightly on the promises God gave him. And because of that, Abraham was able to keep believing even though years and years passed until he was old. In the same way, God's word makes us strong and guides us to His promises when we keep speaking His word. In Psalms, 
When our hope is fixed on God, He's our compass and He will guide us even in the dark. God's word is like the lighthouse in the dark. It may be very dark around us, but as long as we keep our eyes on Him by speaking His promises, we will reach the destination safely. Okay kids, I want you to try this. Close your eyes and say, a pink hippopotamus jumped three times and turned around two times. What do you see? Do you see a pink hippopotamus jumping three times, turning around two times? When you speak something, you will be able to see it in your mind. When you speak God's word, God's word will always stay strong in your mind. And it helps you keep your focus on God and the great things He has for you. The more we spend time with Jesus and read His word, the more we are able to speak the right words every single day. Shall we pray? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for all the great promises you have for us. We pray that you will continue to teach us and guide us to speak the right words in everything we do. Bless and keep our families healthy and strong. In Jesus' name, Amen. Bye kids, see you next week. Bye! To do a coin spinner, you need a bowl, a white paper, a cardboard paper from a cereal box, scissors, coin, pencil, ruler, glue, color pencil, and a blade. Make sure the blade you have, uh, you ask your parents to use it for you, to cut it for you if you want to use it. Okay, shall we start? You take your bowl, put on a white paper, and you draw your circle. After doing your circle, you put your coin right in the center. You can use 20 cents coin, 50 cents coin, or 10 cent coin, and draw your circle in the middle. After doing the circle, you can do your design. Any design you want. I'm going to do mine colorful. And I'm going to color it. Okay, done. And this is my design of it. And I'll cut it out now. After cutting it, I need a base. So what I do is, I draw a circle around my cereal box paper and I cut it. After cutting it, I take my glue, glue it. Glue my design on top of the base. Here you go. Right in the middle, you need to cut a line for the coin to put through. So what I did, what I do is I fold into half and I cut it. After cutting it, you can put your coin in. You can turn. Here you go. These are few of my design of the coin spinner. So after doing it, you can play with your friends, your family, your siblings. Okay, have fun! I hope you
hope you enjoyed today's lesson. See you next week. Bye!